Today, we get a new face. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? AJ Good here at the House of Masks, where we unbox and review cool stuff almost every single day. And in today's video, we are taking a break from the Slipknot theme. We have been cranking out just an insane amount of insanely cool Slipknot content lately, but today we have to pause and we have to take a break from that because I've got something really, really cool to unbox that has nothing to do with Slipknot. So, for those of you that are only here for the Slipknot content, I'm sorry, but I think you can understand stand, and for those of you that are here for more than just the Slipknot content, you're welcome. Now, just for a little bit of context as to what you're about to see in this package, I've got to go back a little bit further in the House of Masks timeline, especially for the people that are new here. Obviously, with all of the Slipknot Sid Wilson content that we've been cranking out lately and all of these metal news outlets plugging the House of Masks, we've gotten quite a lot of new subscribers, so I just want to back up a little bit and explain a little bit about what the House of Masks is and how this piece came to be. So, my name is AJ Good. This is the House of Masks, and on top of being a physical collection, we are also somewhat of an online internet presence. And with that presence comes notoriety. I started to notice years and years ago that when I would go to a concert or a movie or a convention, that I would get stopped by people who would want their photo with me. Well, it turns out that I felt pretty weird just being a normal, boring, dorky white guy standing there taking a picture with somebody. I felt pretty goofy about it. So I decided why not do what all of the people that I look up to do and craft my own look. The original House of Masks look was this all black kind of windbreaker long sock look with a mask that was created by Connor DeLess based on the ideas that I gave him. And we rocked that look for a long, long time. However, there's been almost a revolution and evolution in the House of Masks, especially in the last year or so. With this evolution came an evolution of looks. I felt like it was time to update the looks and everything about this new death mask phase or the dark ages, as I've been calling it since we started started just kind of fell into place. So my new look for the House of Masks has been my own face with nods to my heroes and inspirations along the line. Basically, the entire premise of the look is my face in a death mask form with a paint job that nods one of my inspirations. So I've got a bunch of these death masks and we've been slowly but surely knocking out certain inspirations of mine and just paying tribute with their war paint on my face. What makes more sense than painting my face with a subtle nod to these heroes? After all, they gave me everything that I could have ever possibly imagined in my life and then some. So, so far we've got looks like the John Rice look, we've got a Joey Jordison look, we have a West Borland look, and most recently we've got a mask that was done up by my good, good friend Miss Michelle Morgor with one of her paint jobs, as Michelle was not only one of my biggest inspirations, but one of the first people to really give the House of Masks a big break. I figured it only made sense to have a Michelle Morgor mask, and I just so happened to get lucky enough that she agreed to do the mask for me, so it's even more sentimental and probably turned out way better than it would have if I had tried it myself. But in today's video, we have a continuation of that mask line. We've got a brand new mask to look at here, and this is the second piece out of the line that I haven't painted myself. And fun fact, this one is going to be latex. With 2022 exiting very, very quickly and 2023 right around the corner, I figured it only made sense to go ahead and bring in some new faces for the the new year and go ahead and retire some of the more heavily used masks that were started around the beginning of this year. Those plastic masks take a lot of damage and I'm very, very afraid that I'm going to end up damaging one of them just beyond repair. So the John Rice and the West Borland look are pretty much out of date. They are pretty much done. I love those masks so much that I don't want to see them destroyed. So I'm probably going to leave them be for the most part, which means that right now we've got the Joey mask, we've got the Michelle mask, and we've got this new mask right here here. So, without further ado, what do you say we go ahead and jump on into this package, take a look at the piece, and then talk a little bit about it. So, we've got a package here from the Mask Gallery, aka Mr. Joe Nobile, and I am very excited to see this thing in person. I have seen photos of it, and it looks absolutely amazing, but I think the creep factor of this thing being worn is just going to take it to a completely different level. So, are you ready? Here we go. Drum roll, please. Here is the piece. And oh my God, this is going to be so weird. It's going to make my mom uncomfortable, which I'm really, really happy about. And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited for this one. So let's go ahead and pull it out. I will give you guys the first look at it in the flesh. 
As I mentioned, I have seen photos of it, but I have not seen it in real life. So there you go. What do you think? Obviously, what we have here is a nod to one of the greatest masks ever created, and that is the Pretty Woman. Wow. That is just so, so weird. So weird. Oh my God, I love it. I literally look dead. Oh my God. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this piece. This thing is beautiful, by the way. I'm really, really, really happy with that. I can't wait to wear it. On my list of inspirations is not just people, but obviously characters and certain imagery and the pretty woman Leatherface from the original 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, as I just mentioned, one of the greatest masks of all time. It is easily my favorite Leatherface mask, and it's just, just one of the creepiest things ever. I mean, Come on, man. So I knew that as I was doing this death mask project, once we started pouring latex copies, that I had to have a pretty woman version of myself, and that's exactly what we got here. So I hit up Joe because I know that he is absolutely one of the greatest pretty woman finishers in the game. As you can see by these photos that I'm showing you over here, his pretty woman leather face masks are just on another level. Absolutely insane. I know that he goes with a lot of authentic methods, and he just knows exactly what he's doing. So we kind of brainstormed together we decided not to go with a wig or anything. I just wanted to let my hair flow to keep this kind of close to the whole like makeup look. Well, as close as possible. I know that doesn't really make sense because it obviously is going to look like a skin face, but I already have the hair. Most of my other looks just look like face paint right on my face, and I wanted to keep that somewhat similar, and I don't want to hijack the entire look. So instead of going with a big bushy wig up top, I just decided to have a straight up face done, and I would let my hair kind of dangle over the edges and create almost like a seamlessness to the mask. And along with not stealing the entire look, I'm also not doing the same getup. I won't have the same sort of like suit jacket or whatever it is that Leatherface is wearing uh, during the dinner scene or the chase scene there at the end. I just wanted a nod to the mask and that is exactly what we got. And man, this thing is just on another level. Seeing it in the photos was one thing and it genuinely was weird to look at but seeing it in person here is just something else, man. This is just so, so weird, so weird. Oh, this is gonna be comfy too. It's weird to uh, finally have a mask that I can breathe in. The death masks don't have an open mouth and the nose holes on them are very, very tiny, which obviously I can make those bigger, but it still doesn't help with uh, a lot of like heavy breathing in the mask. So it's going to be weird to be able to talk and breathe through a mask for once, uh, for the first time in like over a year now, so. Hell yeah, shout out to Joe, shout out to the Mask Gallery. This thing is absolutely fantastic and I am very happy to welcome it here on the channel. Cannot wait to see this in photos. Obviously I'm going to have some sort of big crazy cool photo shoot for this to kind of introduce it to anybody that's not watching this video. Introduce it to Instagram and Facebook and whatnot and uh, yeah, I can't wait to get this on the shelf with the other guys. This is definitely the most different so far and I think that this almost has the most different sort of reasoning for being in the collection. This isn't an artist, this isn't a musician, this isn't a a person that inspired me this was a look and a piece of imagery that really really inspired me and has stuck with me for a long long time so yeah mad shout outs to Joe the mask gallery I will be dropping his information down below make sure to go check him out try to scoop something up if you can I promise you're not gonna regret it he was awesome through this entire transaction he shipped it out very very quickly and I actually got it earlier than I was expecting so Joe is the absolute man make sure to let him know that the house of masks sent you and who knows what will happen in the future now with all of that out of the Way, I am going to go ahead and end this video the same as we end all the rest of our unboxings and reviews and that is with some nice up close shots of this piece to let you guys see all of the beautiful beautiful detail and that will be that so until next time this has been AJ good here at the house of masks telling you to say no to drugs and alcohol and yes to the spookiest things and we'll see you guys in the next one